We got a literal have you ever, no I've never moment Sunday night at Kansas Speedway. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Yes, we had an all-time finish Sunday night at Kansas Speedway. We sat around for three, three and a half hours waiting out this rain delay, and it was 100% worth it. Kyle Larson beats Chris Buescher to the line. An absolute drag race finish to the line at Kansas. His margin of victory, one one thousandth of a second. NASCAR is calling it the closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series history, which is absolutely phenomenal. I When you say, oh, I don't think it'll ever be beat, I don't know how you beat this because it was a virtual tie coming across the line. NASCAR scoring monitor even had Chris Buescher listed as the winner and then flipped about a minute later and said that Kyle Larson won. I was listening to Larson's scanner at the time, and they were like, oh, man, he beat you. Like The, t- or the monitor says that Buescher won. And then all of a sudden, their radio goes absolutely insane. They're screaming at him, telling him that he won the race. And it was an all-time finish. There is, of course, a little bit of controversy around this because a lot of people are hung up on the fact that the start-finish line at Kansas Speedway, well, it's not really that straight. When you look at it, the portion that's on the racetrack above the apron is all one size, one thickness. And then you move down, and that thickness narrows up a little bit, and that's where Chris Buescher was at. So the RFK social team posted on Twitter, just going to leave this here. It's a picture of the finish line. And, of course, the side that Buescher was down, down on the apron, it was going to take him a split second longer to trigger the line. Well, NASCAR went ahead and got out in front of the tinfoil hat crowd here, and they shared their margin of victory photo, the the official photo finish from the high-speed camera that is on pit road looking out at the start-finish line. And you can see it right here. It does show Kyle Larson in front of the 17 car of Chris Buescher. So what you see there overlaid is NASCAR's official start-finish line because the start-finish line that's painted on the racetrack That's really just kind of an arbitrary line. It's not the actual what NASCAR is scoring off of. They have this laid out, which is a 100% straight line to determine where the start finish line is at for them. And in this case, Kyle Larson beat Chris Buescher to the line just barely. Chris Buescher after the race was talking and he was like, ah, they showed him the replay and he's like, I still don't see it, which I 100% understand. You don't want to say that this was, you know, that you ended up losing the race. Ford remains winless. 12 races into the season now. Haven't won a race in trucks. Haven't run a, won a race in Xfinity. Haven't won a race in the NASCAR Cup Series. And now they've lost two races and two of the closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series history. One at Atlanta with Ryan Blaney and now one at Kansas with Chris Buescher. This is an all-time finish. This is an all-time race, if we're being completely honest. I'd probably score this race a 95. I, You could convince me to score this a 97. This was easily the best mile-and-a-half intermediate race that we've had with a Gen 7 car. Best mile-and-a-half race we've had better part of 20 years. You got to go back to Gen 4 days to really get to another race where you're like, that was a really good mile-and-a-half race. This race had a bit of everything. You had... At the end of the race, you had fuel strategy, you had tire strategy, you had tire wear, you had multiple different leaders, you had actual, actual on track green flag passes for the lead. And not just like one guy passes them and drives away. No, they were switching back and forth. Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain put on an absolute clinic. Denny Hamlin, Chris Buescher put on a clinic showing everybody this is how you can pass. You had guys diving in on the corners and then sliding up doing the old Dale Jr. patented slide job and saving it people not running into each other it was phenomenal racing top to bottom all day i don't know what else you could ask for we didn't have to talk about the dreaded arrow blocking that we talked about last week at dover was it happening sure but when you have a multi-lane racetrack and a racetrack where you can lift and have tire wear that you get great racing this is again why we say we need more horsepower because it will create off throttle time Creates better racing. Not that they have a ton of off-throttle time here at Kansas, but there is enough with enough tire wear and enough lanes to make a really, really intriguing race happen. And that's what we got on Sunday night. Denny Hamlin looked like he was about to sail off to victory, pick up his fourth win of the year in the first 12 races, and really make everybody on the internet be like, this is Denny's year, even though it's the first weekend in May. And we all know what happens when this guy gets down to the fall. He absolutely collapses. Didn't have to worry about that. Because with... About five laps to go. Kyle Busch spins out coming out of turn two, which did warn a caution, of course. And NASCAR throws a caution. Before that, Martin Truex Jr. was absolutely hunting down the 11 of Denny Hamlin. He was coming full bore. Hamlin's trying to save fuel. 
Martin Truex Jr. is like, we're going to win this race. So then the caution comes out, and if you're a Martin Truex Jr. fan, you already know he's not going to win this race because they never make the right call on pit road. Everybody comes down, they take two tires, and then you have Martin Truex Jr. take four. But, but, he restarts 11th, right? And you're like, all right, that's not great. He's up there in the mix, right coming to the white flag. He was hauling the mail with that, but he gets stuck racing the nine of Chase Elliott, and then coming to the line, you have the top four cars separated by seven one hundredths of a second, an insanely close finish for the top four cars. And then, of course, you have the closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series history, according to NASCAR. This race had it all. I am so happy with what we had in this package. Again, there's going to be haters. You can't please everybody. They're going to find something that they don't like about this race. But top to bottom, you have really good racing. Yeah, another Hendrick car won. And Hendrick and Gibbs have won everything outside of Talladega and Atlanta this year. They won 10 out of the 12 races. Not ideal. I am 100% on board with you. This is supposed to increase parity. I get it. I'm, I'm with you there. But when you just look at it in the in the aspect of this race alone, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And then when you look at the rest of the finishing order, Alex Bowman picks up another top 10 finish. The neckbeards are not going to be happy about that. Alex Bowman needs to be replaced. Roger Cruz coming for him. Did you guys see Roger Cruz got an ally as a sponsor on this car this week? Probably means that he's going to take Alex Bowman's ride. Don't you think? No, I don't. I don't think that. Why do you think Ally's on the car? Because it's a lending partner. And who's the car that they're on? The truck that they're on? The one that's sponsored by HendrickCars.com. Rick Hendrick's got a plethora of automobile dealerships. Of course, he's going to put his financing partner on the car with it. Come on, guys. Use your brains every now and then. Noah Gragson picks up another top 10 finish. He finishes in ninth place, led the Stuart Haas cars. Uh, Josh Berry rallies to get a 15th place finish. Great run for him. Chase Briscoe, 21st, and Ryan Priest, 28th. Ryan Priest left out of the Stuart Haas Racing study group, which he didn't seem very happy about on Twitter. I guess we'll learn more about that. Michael McDowell picks up a top 10 as well, rounding out your top 10. Kyle Busch rebounded to finish eighth, even after his spin. Overall, this race, like I said, it at one point did attempt to devolve into a truck series race, uh, a typical truck series race, not what we saw on Saturday night where they ran nearly caution free. No, a typical truck series race where everything just is complete chaos and they're just running into each other for absolutely no reason. Because at one point in this race, there were like four cautions in a row and the longest green flag run was like three laps. It was not ideal for that. A day after the Kentucky Derby and its 150th running had a literal photo finish between three horses, NASCAR says, hold my beer. And then they go out there and they have an even closer finish. This race was better than Atlanta. Hands down, way better than Atlanta. If you think Atlanta was a better race than this, then I think that you might just like super speedways only. Because what we saw today, this was exactly what we've been asking for. Yes, the Gen 7 car is inherently flawed and it's not a good race car. Turns out when you let people design a stock car that have never designed a stock car before, they just don't do a very good job. And while it doesn't race well anywhere else, somehow it races really well on mile and a half, even though it was never intended to. The Panacea, it was supposed to fix everything and it really didn't fix everything. It fixed mile and a half, which is great. New idea. We'll race these on mile and a half. Gen 7 cars on mile and a half. Everything else, super speedways, road courses, and short tracks, we're going to race the Gen 6 car. New rule. I just I just instituted it. I'm going to call Ben Kennedy up. We're going to rewrite the script overnight this week and then get ready for Darlington. We'll still have the Gen 7 car at Darlington, but when we get to North Wilkesboro, Gen 6 car. Uh, we can only wish and hope there. Yeah, phenomenal race. Top to bottom. I'm interested to hear what everybody else has to say about this because it was really, really good, in my opinion. I'm happy with everything that we saw out of it, and that typically doesn't happen sometimes, especially with this Gen 7 car. But it's really refreshing to come out of a week where all we're talking about from Dover is get rid of the rear view camera, get rid of the rear view mirror, get rid of spotters. I know, I know. Bert and Fred Ward were not happy about it. I said you went, I told you they weren't going to be. And now we're going to have a discussion this week about how great this was and how we need to go to more mile and a half. And even Larson said that we need to go to more mile and a half. And I'm with him. Bring back Kentucky. Bring back Chicago land. They're the only tracks that are racing really well right now. Short tra- short tracks stink. Road courses stink. Super speedways are even bad at this point. So let's 
have a schedule filled with mile and a half at this point. Who cares? Because at least they're racing somewhat decent, or in Kansas's case, exceptionally well. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this race. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.